good evening everyone thanks for your interest and um, may i say that your interest is not surprising considering who the speaker is our own uh, pastor shriram and the interesting topic that's uh, 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 the day for the day so without any ado i'll uh, invite professor mahesh panchagnula to come forward and uh, make a few introductory remarks before we uh, listen to shriram good evening friends um, it's a pleasure and delight to be here today uh, the heritage center which you see across the street from here is is now slowly becoming an integral part of uh, several of our visitors to campus schedule that as we walk them around campus uh, we are also beginning to see a role and relevance for a place like that i want to kind of frame this a little bit uh, you know indians have for a long time uh, been accused of not being history conscious um, this goes back i mean the the reason this accusation is uh, made against us is based on the idea that our kings in the past didn't employ court historians to record history as it happened or that we didn't store our memories of history uh, in a way that the west did formally uh, but more recent research has shown that that is not true that we have our own ways of uh, of, of uh, storing memorizing and uh, passing down our history and uh, by and large it is you know we always ask this question just like uh, hillary was asked when he came down from everest as to you know why climb mountains uh, we were also asked this question why why learn history and uh, the answer is simple who we are is because of because of a time integrated differential <coughs> equation going back from t equal to 0 till today okay and that history as we teach in our differential equations class applies just as well to where we are today so i think uh, as an iit we have now realized the the importance and value of this and i think it's up to us to cherish it to memorize to uh, digest it into our own selves and pass it down to the next generation of people and thanks to uh, thanks to people like professor swami uh, kumaran professor shriram we now have a formal mechanism to do this i want to thank iit for giving us a place like the heritage center that allows us to store our memories collectively and i wish it grows in times to come thank you good evening to all of you it's a pleasure uh, to be able to talk uh, share with you i was uh, talking something to kumaran uh, fairly a couple of months ago and somehow the topic came up and i said yeah i have some uh, material that i have uh, collected over the years looked at over the years Uh, which all show something some bearing on the uh, how the campus was developed over the i think i should say the last uh, 60 years uh, there are people here in the audience who have been uh, part of this campus for most of that time now i have also reached a point where uh, i am also belonging to that group uh, i came here uh, as that indicates i came here in 1977 so i have been uh, part of this campus for 40 something years uh, a good majority of its two thirds of its existence i do remember some things from my student days uh, i hope to share uh, some of that uh, as we go along mm. uh, this is what is our uh, campus uh, as of now this is our usual uh, i think there is some issue with the projector i think some of you who can uh, see the screen uh, can see that uh, the image uh, that's kind of how i want my presentation to look like it's not quite showing the same way here uh, you have to imagine uh, it's a little better of course today we have uh, two campuses uh, this campus which i am calling uh, as the adyar campus and we do have uh, a second campus that we have uh, started up at uh, tayur about uh, 30 40 kilometers uh, down from here uh, i'll talk uh, my first two slides will be on the uh, <coughs> tayur campus and uh, well i can uh, show something some detail of that here also uh, Uh, there is in this uh, satellite uh, google now google uh, big brother is there right so you can go and ask google and uh, gives you most uh, answers to most questions uh, so this one shows our uh, campus uh, tayur campus uh, fairly clearly you can see the uh, uh, here this is the compound wall that we now have on our campus uh, you blow it up a little bit it is a little bit uh, more clearly i have a slide showing a little bit better uh, detail on that Uh, this one shows uh, the layout of where that is uh, this is uh, muttukadu uh, lagoon we have uh, this one is uh, ecr and we have uh, omr uh, is here 
this area is uh, Kelambakam and this is uh, Vandalur Kelambakam road this road ends uh, right next uh, uh, to the zoo if you come from the city to the zoo and uh, right after the zoo if you take a left uh, that is that road which comes all the way to Kelambakam somewhere uh, not far from Kelambakam there is a small hillock and a temple and right across the street from that hillock is where this is where uh, you can see the make out barely make out the shape of the campus here uh, that is where our uh, new campus maybe 20 30 years from now uh, one more uh, uh, session like this somebody will talking of we talk uh, about the development of the second campus uh, maybe uh, this is a slightly better closer view which uh, shows uh, more clearly the layout of that uh, second campus uh, you can see already uh, across the street there is some uh, uh, you know some IIT Nagar and all that is uh, already uh, starting up. I will be touching up on something like that that happened uh, right here also when this campus was uh, being formed. Uh, there is evidence uh, documents to show that kind of thing happening. Uh, this is uh, what the I think right now we have a compound wall. The plan is to do all most or all of our future expansion on that campus because I think uh, we have pretty much run out of uh, space on this campus. Uh, but my theme today will be, we are, yes, we have run out of space, but I think we have done a wonderful job of uh, making this campus uh, green. Making this campus uh, green, not keeping it green. We are the ones who made it green. I will show you the documents today that show what this campus was in the 60s and you can compare with what it is today. We are the ones who made it green. We can be proud of that. We have to keep it. We have to keep at it. I think if you see in Google Maps, you see uh, this campus today. It's not green. It's brown. I think 30 years from now, I would like for uh, somebody to give a talk on how we made this campus also green, just like uh, this IDR campus. Uh, this is our. Uh, oh, I should uh, thank uh, several people who have given me uh, data that all I am freely using today. Our Heritage Center itself has a good website, lots of photographs, uh, maps, collection is there. I have drawn on that. Engineering unit has given me this and lot more uh, information, data going back many, many years. Uh, the US Geological Survey has been uh, uh, putting out lot of stuff in the public domain now. I have freely drawn from that. Uh, I think and Heritage Center, uh, uh, Engineering Unit, I think that's about it. Uh, this is what engineering unit uh, circulates today as uh, our uh, campus map. Uh, the key thing here I just want to talk about uh, there are four clearly demarcated uh, zones. Colors show much better on uh, that one. Uh, there is uh, the residential zone, there is the academic zone, we have the hostel zone, the student residential zone and the balance is essentially a green zone. Uh, which is not, there are no buildings, it is unpopulated. Uh, there is some plan to extend the green zone some more into this. Uh, it's a fairly good size. I think a large chunk is uh, completely green, no buildings at all. But not just that, even there is lot of green over, you know, just take a look outside. There is lot of green all over the campus. Uh, this is uh, kind of what uh, Google Maps, I think, uh, shows as the campus layout uh, in the map mode. Uh, you can't make out much between where is the campus and where the other areas are but you switch to uh, satellite mode and you can immediately see where is the extent of the campus the green line that is the extent of the campus all the stuff outside there that's not that is what is outside the campus uh, you can see there are a lot of buildings within this area also once again if you can uh, take a look at that i think that's uh, far more uh, uh, clear as to what I am trying to show here. Uh, we will have, we'll, we'll explore a little bit more. So that's that's the green campus that we have been able to create and maintain. This is the original uh, land survey map that was used to create the uh, uh, land campus. This is a survey map that dates to 1957 or uh, 58. Uh, this shows there is a plan to create a higher technological uh, institute and this shows where the land for that will come. Uh, there is a large uh, blueprint. This is taken off of a blueprint. Our engineering unit has, a, I don't know, that big uh, blueprint that uh, shows uh, this entire uh, detail. Uh, there are essentially, uh, you can see there are some uh, uh, slight coloration regions are marked in this. Uh, it's a blueprint, so there is only different shades of uh, blue on there. 
you can see there is one uh, clearly marked shade over there that's the portion that was part of the Gindi Park as it's labeled here also that is parked uh, around 400 acres or so of Gindi Park to be demarcated and handed over to create this institution plus there is this lighter shading area here which is all uh, private uh, lands, patta lands being cultivated uh, by people living here uh, to be taken over and then created into. I don't know how somebody comes up with uh, why this line should be here and not here or not there. I have no idea. There is no document that shows uh, how somebody comes up with we need 600 acres or 620 or 630, 400 acres here. It looks like you know okay and uh, acquire another 250 acres or something thereabouts so a lot of land here was uh, acquired and uh, added on to this there is some more here you know there is a, a large area of this is actually was underwater as a tank i'll be talking more about that also okay so this is a detail of the land acquisition that was uh, done this is part of that same uh, blueprint uh, the Gindi Park area at that time was 1,270 acres. It has shrunk significantly since then. Land has been given for other users. Gandhi, Gandhi Mandapam was already carved out when this campus was done. But there are other users also. Land has been taken up. I am not concerned about that. This is what was uh, the Gindi Park plain area. And there is also lake area. Lakes 130 acres that were kind of adjoining that. Plus more area to be acquired. I have summed that up, uh, rounded off and summed that up uh, in this slide. This is what the plan was uh, at that time. About uh, 250 acres, you know, it's not exactly 250, some, uh, okay, it, this one says 276, but uh, 276 was not given over from uh, that actually. I can go back to, to the previous slide and uh, point out what was not given. There is one small area here uh, called Aplakulam, uh, which is a pond on the, right now it is on the, across the wall on the other side of the uh, wall from us. Uh, now it is part of the uh, Gindi National Park. Uh, you see the land documents. Uh, you can see the initial proposal. This is what is carved out. Then the documents show that the uh, conservator of forests uh, who is running the Gindi National Park writing back and saying that please don't do this. Uh, there is one very important uh, animal watering hole that is uh, over here. So please do not give that away to the IIT campus. Uh, redraw this boundary so that this uh, uh, water body comes on this side and is available to the uh, wildlife that is on that side and so a revised proposal is put up and uh, the area changes from uh, what would have been here if you add these up you will get 400 and something uh, finally the hand uh, the land from the uh, gindi park that was handed over is actually only about 385 acres or so some 20 acres uh, removed from this which is the Aplakulam uh, and uh, uh, the gate there we call that as the Aplakulam gate because of that it is right next to that uh, the uh, uh, for most of the uh, the last 30 40 years nothing much has happened there and there was not much water being retained in Aplakulam but in the last uh, five years or so uh, wildlife has taken a very active interest they have dug up deepened the uh, that pond there now it holds water uh, throughout the year. It has become a very valuable uh, water resource for that side of the campus. Uh, it's just across there. When you go to uh, Velacheri Gate, uh, as the road uh, curves to the left, this is what is beyond the wall uh, on your right. In fact, uh, some of you remember few years, a couple years back when we had floods, uh, that uh, pond surplus and uh, water was uh, flowing over from that under the wall into our campus. And if you go now, you can see that wall has been uh, shored up. Uh, I think some portions of the wall were uh, uh, actually uh, fell off also, fell off onto the other side of the pond. We have restored that. Hopefully now the wall is strong enough and even with excess water, it will not uh, fall over. So that's the part that was redrawn and uh, not uh, made over to that. Let's uh, just round it off around 250 acres of plain area and around not quite 150, 130 or something like that which was a tank that covered a large part of campus. I'll show that on a sketch, my own sketch uh, in just a minute. Uh, the forest area that consisted of all this was formally denotified and declassified. People talk about this uh, as if this is still a reserve forest. This campus is not a reserve forest. I will show you the uh, copy of the uh, uh, Fort St. George uh, Gazette 
which uh, we had uh, I, this is one of the people i forgot to acknowledge our resident registrar uh, this is vijay lakshmi uh, worked with me when i was sitting in ad block to trace lot of the land documents and she was able to dig out uh, fort st george uh, gazette notification that formally declassifies uh, reclassifies these 400 uh, 380 odd acres as uh, not uh, forest land not reserve forest anymore and shall be given over to iit to be used for uh, institutional purposes another 250 acres of so of uh, taramani and uh, velacheri uh, area as shown in my uh, that previous sketch was also acquired and added on to this campus subsequently some more land uh, was another 2 300 acres was also acquired we'll give here the story of that in uh, just a second so this is the original uh, land acquisition record that is part all this was done the initially the office was situated within the uh, Uh, directorate of technical education when the campus was initially formed 1959 the institution was kind of headquartered there all these land records are all sitting there in the directorate of technical education here is an extract which shows the actual uh, amount of uh, land that was acquired from velacheri and taramani around 223 acres and this was the amount of uh, compensation that was given to the uh, land owners who were there it was not in fact if you read all this they just didn't uh, compensate only for the land people had houses and as part of this package uh, new taramani village was uh, built up the houses were built uh, for the people whose houses were earlier taken over not only in uh, taramani but also in uh, i think it mentions this year also there is kanagam and there was chinna kanagam and people whose lands were taken over who had small houses meaning no small huts essentially these were all very small uh, land holdings one acre Uh, less than an acre fractional acre and really people who were doing farming here essentially subsistence farming kind of thing not uh, rich farmers rich farmers were on the other side of the uh, buckingham canal where the land was more fertile water availability was much better we'll see the price differential of the land there in just a second so this is the compensation that was uh, given to the people uh, all these all these land records are there we can look at the uh, fort st george gazette it has all the details land previously owned by so and so notified for acquisition so much compensation paid uh, in this lot almost everybody took the compensation there is no issue there is subsequent uh, uh, taking over that was also done and to this day some of the people whose lands were taken over have refused to take the compensation so at that time 40 years ago 50 years ago the compensation money was remitted to the uh, court and it sits there and i think people who are uh, descendants of the original owners probably are not even aware that this money is uh, there there are many there are at least 10 to 15 parcels of land whose uh, takeover compensation money has been remitted to the court and there is no record of anybody taking the money back so in some sense uh, these people have never taken their compensation they didn't want it they they thought it land should not have been given whatever you know Uh, and that's a story another day somebody has to go and uh, human interest story research that and come back uh, but this is what was the uh, around 4 or 380 odd acres uh, from the gindi national park and uh, 224 acres of uh, farmland acquired uh, anything that is uh, you know all our most of our academic zone and the hostel zone is all acquired land uh, and this was the compensation for dry land wetland and uh, plots with houses this is the kind of number uh, which was given in 1959 60 uh, but soon after and here okay here is the uh, this is an extract of the uh, uh, fort st george gazette the date is given there 14 september 1961 interesting huh? the campus was started in 1959 building construction started in 1959 60 buildings have been built all over the place the process is getting over only in 1961 formally it is declassified and uh, made as uh, not as a forest area only in 1961 even the land acquisition proceedings 1959 60 61 it's all going on while the land acquisition is going on construction is already going on you know this is uh, today i think we would uh, we would all have a cow about this the people would stand outside protest these were different times 1950s and 60s it's you know government is you know oh government for a good purpose we will not complain about it they are taken over the land i mean essentially if you see what was happening people were farming there is an announcement your land is going to be taken over and the while they watch before their land acquisition proceedings are over 
uh, you know all uh, equipment people come and then all construction material arrives hostels are being built up the institution is starting to run but subsequently it's all you know it's all straightened out but those were the days here is the formal notification that uh, you know shall be see, declared under blah 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 shall cease to be reserved for us blah, blah and then this continues there is a next page on the notification which gives details of the uh, uh, extent of the land where it is how many acres all that is there uh, little bits uh, more interest i will come back on here these are again from that big blueprint you can see there is a large say, area here right at this is the entrance this is where we have the Y and the uh, fork and uh, road coming in there. That entire area, now you can see part of it is really low lying in between the in gate and out gate near the car park. If you see between the car park and the wall, it is low. That's part of this old tank that used to be, you know, the 150 acres of tank. There is some part of it. Here is one huge chunk of it. Third loop road is somewhere over here. In fact, this, this uh, measurement line approximately is the contour of uh, Delhi Avenue. Delhi Avenue is running exactly where this uh, tank used to be and uh, Bonn Avenue is somewhere along the uh, bund or the edge of this uh, tank over here. This is the tank in the uh, entry portion. You can see the tank extending on. Here is Peliam and Coil. All that huge area around there, part of a tank. It doesn't end there. The tank extends down over here also. Uh, OAT is somewhere over here today. The tank extended all the way, Some this comes all the way, almost all the way beyond Gajendra circuit. The old lake that used to exist inside this campus, 150 acres, covered a huge portion of the campus. Uh, so, you know, a lar large portion is the lake and not usable. Uh, there is a portion of it which held water for most of the year, but there is a large portion which held not for, you know, during the monsoon for about one month or so. Uh, that would be under one foot or so of water. Then after the rain recedes and then the people start using the water. There were people who were using this water uh, for agriculture. There were lands, uh, the part of the campus has been acquired. So now those people don't have a problem. There are lands further south and further east of that who are using the water from this lake for their cultivation. Okay, so the you can see the correspondence. So the registrar writes to the uh, government saying that in the first rains they found that more than 200 acres of the campus was uh, underwater almost a third of the campus was underwater uh, includes almost the entire uh, residential area of uh, today used to be underwater uh, during the uh, rains in those days and they, there were users farm users who were between this campus and buckingham canal who were using that water to cultivate their land so if that land, that if the lake had to be, you know, there is a requirement there generated that the lake cannot be allowed to fill up to this level. We have to reduce the mean flow water, mean water level, the peak water level in the lake by opening the sluices that lead out into Buckingham Canal and lower the level of the lake. And if we do that, of course, uh, these people who are using that water for agriculture are going to be no longer be able to do that. So their land would also have to be acquired. That is the second round of acquisition. I will show you some documents on that also. Uh, this is all, uh, it stretches all the way up to uh, Taramani Link Road. You know, today we see that you go down uh, Rajiv Gandhi Saleh, big signal is there. Uh, all the way up to that road is where right now where all this Ascendas and now this DLF is starting a new development. Up to all that was acquired as a part of the second round acquisition. Uh, I tried to trace using the maps. Uh, what is the extent of the uh, lake that was in existence uh, then by transferring the image from the blueprint. Today the lake is only having that much but it is much deeper so it holds water uh, throughout the year. The shallow lake used to extend uh, up to that. Uh, I think again once again I think those who are here can see the map uh, much better. You can see up to water all the way behind uh, OAT is somewhere uh, over there. So this extended uh, beyond that and that is how big the lake was but since uh, if that much area was underwater this campus would not have been usable so uh, all the people living down there who were using this water for agriculture their lands were also requisitioned and taken over and the lake was uh, shrunk to this kind of thing what it is uh, today here is a map uh, that i took out from uh, my student days this was distributed to us in uh, 19 this was my graduating year and uh, uh, 
some interesting parts this shows the tank is there you know it shows the lake going up to this you know but this is a bogus map i'll come to that in a second yeah this is all i mean there's a lot of stuff here which absolutely did not exist i was there look at look at the hostels hostels are not laid out like this, this is a, i think this was the original plan as to how the campus should have been laid out it was not done exactly like this to me the most interesting part in this is you can see there is a large you know there is a small island here and the tank extends all the way up to here there is the stadium you know there is still one leg of the tank you know you have to go to the stadium over the bridge so there is still little bit remnant of that but it extended well beyond that you see behind oat it came up to that the original extent it was much broader and it would have covered an area about that much but it had narrowed down at least as per this plan and uh, something like this was shown all this has shown as being constructed this was in 1982 i'll show you a 1965 satellite photograph that shows that there was zero construction no this is in 82 but as of 65 there was nothing and the building a few buildings were built there much much later uh, in some sense this is just you know some idea of how it should have been built for example here there is a complete mismatch between what was really there and what is shown here uh, that is the central workshops these are the workshop type labs all the metallurgy chemical engineering all that is there it would appear that the original plan was to have two separate buildings uh, i don't believe it was ever separate buildings like that we know it's all one long building over here across the street this building exists i think that is the ic engines and uh, uh, hdm hdml lab is there there was supposed to have been as per this plan one more building like that there uh, not quite so we know the aero department was what uh, came up over there of course it was there when i studied uh, you know in 82 i got my degree and uh, this was certainly not there there was something else over here the hostels also you know this is i, I just could not make any sense of uh, you know except to say that maybe this was what originally was planned as the hostels but it never panned out that way some of it is correct you know so uh, uh, well you know i think krishna kaveri is all right i think that's kind of how it was built i think the rest of it i, I don't think i can figure out um, perhaps this was narmada tapti uh, maybe brahmaputra then here i don't know i can't make out at all here uh, this is not the actual layout at all it's very different uh, there is godav and saras if you call these as godav and saras then i don't know where is uh, jamuna you know jamuna would have been somewhere there and ganga would have been opposite jamuna anyway something but the number of hostels appears to match you can imagine that is uh, jamuna something you know and then maybe alaknanda here something like that uh, some planning is there you know as to how it should be Uh, some interesting thing is also shown here i did not realize this for many many years if you look carefully at this building and this building this is uh, esb that is msb actually they are both identical somebody drew a plan and just uh, turned it around you know this building and just turn it around you get that building in the old days it was almost like that the two buildings were almost identical now also they remain kind of identical except now crc has been built up over here something more has been built over here Uh, center for systems and devices esb has been extended on this side uh, this one shows a bsb also and perhaps a second planned wing it's not very clear in the on the screen but this portion is in dotted lines perhaps it was planned as an extension which was never built something else has come up over there uh, this one also if you see the roads this one also shows a dotted line and uh, that is supposedly the bus route uh, as per this plan this uh, figure the bus uh, is supposed to come down uh, delhi avenue uh, i don't remember from my student days the bus coming down uh, delhi avenue maybe some people here may remember shangugam you remember did it come down delhi avenue i don't uh, to my memory the bus has always come down bon avenue only but in this figure it shows the bus route coming down delhi avenue and taking a turn at the shopping center going towards the school and then continuing down uh, Uh, bon avenue to come to gajendra circle and then uh, here also it shows you know there is a path going up uh, back to where biotech road is there now and then going to the hostel that is what is shown as the bus route this map appears to be a mixture of uh, some fact and uh, some fiction but there is lot of interesting you know especially for me this uh, this uh, tank extent shown is very interesting that it is shown uh, all the way even up to 1982 Uh, today i showed you in the beginning i showed you an engineering unit map of today 
that is more realistic uh, that is reflective of actually what is on the ground uh, you know you can see here you know the buildings are laid out in you know random the some vertical some horizontal all over the place it is maybe some kind of initial planning idea of how it should have been constructed maybe it turned out a different way later on okay uh, so here is an extract uh, which talks about uh, uh, how this was done and why we would need additional land acquisition in order to uh, you know see around 200 acres of the land this is part of the uh, land acquisition document that is sitting in the directorate of technical education this gives the reasoning and then goes on to uh, what needs to be done what needs to be done to acquire the land and so on uh, next page is uh, more interesting information is there uh, it says specifically you know the tanks and uh, how much uh, area of uh, land uh, ayakat is there uh, which is using the uh, water from here uh, for cultivation purposes uh, that's 200 acres and another 120 some 300 plus acres uh, being cultivated with uh, water that used to be stored in this lake so there is a proposal this document is really a proposal to the government to therefore set up some mechanism and uh, acquire all those 300 acres also uh, i think but in this one uh, now it is called as the institute of technology the proper name has come now indian institute of technology is uh, the name uh, can be seen here so this is a 1960 61 uh, later document where it na name is no longer this ab abstract uh, higher technological uh, institute but this one uses the correct name the tank level has to be lowered and it goes on to see what should be the strategy uh, a special tasildar office was set up to do this uh, 300 plus acre land acquisition and all those lands were also acquired through the uh, formal process and uh, here is the gazette notification for that now it shows clearly indian institute of technology madras is the proper name this is all, anything that uses this name would be part of the second round of acquisition and all the first round acquisition all talks of an abstract uh, higher technological institute because that predates the IA institutes of technology act of 1961 and then this particular uh, gazette notification talks about uh, some land which is actually government uh, Porambok land on which people are squatting they have houses and so on those are simply to be taken back over and the people with houses have to be uh, relocated there is a lot more lot more on this uh, more interesting data comes on this one uh, if you see the original acquisition in around 1959-60 the cost of acquisition was 4 rupees a cent for dry land and 10 rupees a cent for uh, culti that is a uh, wetland Nanjai Punjai uh, prices have shot up by 1961-62 uh, since a big uh, institution is coming up here everybody is starting to push up the land prices it's already going for uh, 15 uh, you know somewhere more than 10 rupees 10 to 15 20 rupees even uh, per cent uh, it's a different story altogether if you go to the other side of the buckingham canal where already residential areas are starting to come up but still there is lot of uh, lot of farmland it is selling for more than 100 120 rupees a cent 10000 rupees an acre kind of price which is still a very good price if you had that kind of money uh, on that side but here people were demanding this is the kind of money we need if you want to part with uh, the land the government came up with some median formula somewhere between uh, 10 and 15 rupees a cent is what they finally offered so obviously people who are expecting this kind of money uh, were very unhappy with the second round of acquisition you find if you go through the records there are more people in the second round of acquisitions who have refused to take the compensation uh, so though the state has gone through its uh, procedure notified the land and formally acquired the land the, uh, the previous landowners simply refused to take the compensation money is still sitting in the court for some slightly larger number of people whose acquisition was done at uh, this stage okay uh, you go back to the uh, annual reports of the institute there's a lot of information on how the uh, campus is built up you look at the very first uh, annual report this is the only thing it mentions about uh, the building of the campus that uh, the there is nothing there is no campus yet right people are all living in the Saida Pet and Gindi hostels and the classes are held in uh, AC Tech that's all this one has uh, you go to the next year already there is progress in the very second year uh, already the uh, uh, you know people the second batch of students uh, I think this is documented in heritage center also uh, already the hostel is already uh, done the second year students are which is the people in the first batch who were initially staying in the Gindi and uh, 
Saidapet hostels continued to live there. But the second batch straight away moved on campus. Just one year after the campus started, Krishna Hostel, Kaveri Hostel were getting ready and the 1960 batch uh, admission batch were straight away put into uh, on campus uh, hostel. Academic buildings were still not quite uh, ready. Classes were still held partly here and partly in uh, AC Tech, I believe, but it's all getting ready. You go to the third annual report, 1961-62 uh, uh, academic year, if you look at the annual report, now the report is uh, reading completely different. The institute has a room, I mean, es essentially if you read this, uh, campus is functional. Within three years after it started, the campus is functional, very limited buildings only. Uh, staff quarters are still to come up because, uh, you know, remember 200 acres of uh, lake is still sitting there, can't quite build over there yet. It's going to take a couple more years to start building the quarters. But already enough academic building, BSB has come up and uh, some hostels have also already come up. So, you know, essentially we have moved onto campus within uh, three years, which is really very, very fast considering how it was done. I also went back and looked at uh, what is the kind of, uh, I showed you a few slides ago about the kind of land compensation money that was uh, given. I tried to find out what was the cost of construction of the campus. In the first two annual reports, uh, the financial report is also there. There is no mention about any construction cost at all. I have to take a guess because this part was constructed before the passage of the Institutes of Technology Act. The actual underlying structure of what this would be perhaps was not known. It appears that the construction was done by uh, CPWD as if it's a part of a, uh, any government building, you know, maybe a ministry building or something like that. So there appears to be no money that is given to IIT to construct these buildings. But from this 1961-62, Institutes of Technology Act has been passed. So now we are no longer completely an arm of the government. We are an autonomous institution. So now CPWD is not going to build and bill it to the government. CPWD is building, but now the bills are being paid by a money that is given to IIT first, and then IIT is paying the bills uh, in turn. I looked at the 1961-62 accounts. Uh, the total expenditure was about uh, 1.5 crores was the total expenditure and the I am always curious as to how much fee income uh, is uh, paying for the cost of running the institution. Fee income in 1961-62 was 1.5 lakhs out of 1.5 crores uh, uh, total expenditure uh, but it's not as bad as it sounds because out of the 1.5 crores expenditure 85 lakhs in 1961-62 was construction expenditure which means it is not uh, normal running expenditure only the balance uh, around uh, 40 45 lakhs or so is actually the uh, cost of uh, running the institution out of which one and a half lakhs is coming as fees somewhere around five percent between five and eight percent something like that i think even today if you look at uh, where we are financially our fee income is paying for uh, something like that, you know, something like around 5% of the uh, uh, total budget. Of course, today we spend a lot more money. Uh, if you exclude the money uh, spent on sponsored project in this floor, uh, it, today IIT Madras costs approximately 600 crores a year to run, uh, out of which uh, a few crores now come as uh, fee income. So some things have changed, some things have not changed. This is a picture that I took out of the Heritage Center. Uh, by looking at it, it appears to be, I can kind of recognize what it is. You can see the uh, uh, skating rink over there. So therefore, this must be uh, Godavari and that is uh, Saraswati. So this picture must have been taken standing somewhere on top of uh, Ganga Hostel is uh, what I believe this must have been. Uh, you can see the further hostels uh, down the road also. Uh, Narmada is there. You can kind of make out, I think that must be... Uh, uh, Kaveri hostel you can make out. Krishna is kind of behind down there, can't see it, uh, but you can see uh, something here. I am going to pause my uh, PowerPoint for a second. Uh, the PowerPoint cut and paste is not showing too well. The original photo actually comes up uh, much better. Let me try to pull that up. Oh, it's fine, I don't need the light. Please leave it like that. I already opened it up. I think this shows a little bit more detail than what you could see in the PowerPoint. You can see the uh, hostel which was ground plus two in those days. Uh, this is the uh, common room. You can see the skating ring and you can see the uh, uh, Saraswati hostel also behind. Uh, I went back to Ganga hostel uh, last week 
and I went up to the terrace and uh, took a picture and I'll share that with you next. I suppose I can close this and go down to... Uh, this is almost exactly from the same point, same view. Uh, that is the entrance block of uh, Godavari Hostel. That is the bathroom block. Uh, the mess hall is down here. Uh, of course, now we have put, uh, not the common room is down here. Uh, we don't have the just a ground floor now. Uh, there have been rooms built up on top of that. And now this is the ground plus uh, two is what it was in those days. But now we have made uh, not visible here. But the, all those hostels are now ground plus uh, three. One more floor has been added. So actually, if it was not been added, uh, the original top of the hostel would have been only here, kind of under the tree line. You won't even see this. But now this additional floor is now showing above the tree line. This entire floor was not there in the early years. Uh, this is the bathroom block and over the common rooms. Right now, I believe additional rooms are being added and the back. And then you can kind of vaguely make out uh, uh, Saraswati hostel is back there. And uh, as everywhere now, cell phone towers, even right here, there is one uh, right on the hostel, cell phones uh, everywhere. But this is the view as of today. It's completely, you know, the whole place is uh, full of trees. That's what it is today. I can, uh, I suppose I will go back to my, uh, uh, no, how do I do this? From uh, current uh, present, uh, from current slide, okay. okay. So this is what it looked like. Uh, this is a picture from 1966, I think is what the Heritage Center has labeled this as. Uh, I, did some, I did some digging and uh, this is also there partly in our, uh, uh, in the uh, Heritage website also. Uh, this is a spy satellite photograph from uh, 1965, uh, which shows the entire area, what it was. Uh, you can make out in this, uh, which is the Gindi forest area that was acquired and which are the private lands that were acquired. This tree line is clearly visible. That is the end line edge of the reserve forest. It is visible all the way. And all this land to the south of that was all the 250 acres or so that was uh, acquired. Indulge me for a couple of minutes as an aerospace engineer. Uh, satellite photography and uh, airplane aerial photography is of great interest to me. So I will uh, uh, tell stories for a couple of minutes about how these came about. Uh, this was this is a picture from 1965 October, 1960s. Cold War is in uh, full swing. Uh, communists and the uh, capitalists or whatever free uh, U.S. and the Soviet Union are at it. In the 50s, the U.S. came up with the U-2 spy plane. The point of that was it was flying much higher than any aircraft before it, any aircraft that existed at that time, it could fly at, it was designed to fly at uh, 70,000 feet, which converts to about uh, 21 kilometers. Uh, any other airplane operating at that time was limited to around 50, 55,000 square foot. So you are a clear 10, 15,000 square foot higher than any other airplane. The idea was, so you fly, you just go higher and uh, the Soviet uh, Ruskies cannot shoot you down. But of course, they are not idiots. So they modified, uh, they had rockets. This is in the early 60s. So already, you know, Sputnik has already been launched. Rocket technology is already available. Missiles are already available. So they designed a missile that would go more than this. They designed a missile that would go up to minimum of 25 kilometers. So Gary Powers, we have seen, I think many of us have seen Bridge of Spies. Uh, Gary Powers flew a spy mission. You know, though all that movies, everything is made, lot of information is available. It was only about five years ago that Gary Powers' original flight plan was declassified and made as uh, public information. Uh, till that time, Gary Powers was uh, shot down in flying a U-2 over Soviet Union in 1960. Uh, before that, what mostly they were doing was, they would uh, come from somewhere, Pakistan or Turkey or somewhere, go over the Soviet Union for uh, maybe an hour or something and scoot right back. Gary Powers' mission was much more daring. The plane took off from Peshawar and it was uh, the flight plan was to go to uh, Norway, you know, go right across all the way, daring overflight all the way across and uh, didn't work out too well. About uh, halfway into the flight, uh, lots of missiles were launched. No missile directly hit the airplane, but one exploded fairly close to the airplane and uh, knocked out the engine. So there goes the airplane. The pilot had to, Gary Powers had to uh, uh, eject 
and then uh, parachuted down and he was captured kurushev was a extremely cunning person right they never let it out that the gary powers had been captured they simply said on airplane has uh, crashed and uh, he was flying missions for the all these missions were operated by the cia at that time he was flying for the cia and kurushev just was just uh, sitting there and watching what would be the story that the americans would put out the story that was put out was this was some kind of uh, weather reconnaissance airplane that was supposed to be flying over turkey and lost its way and went and uh, crashed in the soviet union kurushev waited for a week or 10 days then he put gary powers on tv he comes and says okay i am gary powers i flew this spy mission over the soviet union and i was shot down all that that is spy was a spy then bridge of spies is the next chapter of the story gary powers was uh, sentenced as a spy in soviet union but there was a spy exchange and uh, he was returned to the uh, uh, us uh, in exchange for somebody else who was caught spying in the us so that is not you know very dangerous that has become very dangerous so us comes up with a revised uh, mission design the u2 was not a very fast plane it was flying only very high it was designed to fly at 20 kilometers very high above the reach of other airplanes is what was the idea but it was flying only top speed was only 600 700 kilometers an hour so it could be shot down very easily so go to locky ask them to design a better plane that cannot be shot down they come up with the sr71 which flies at even slightly higher altitude at mark 3 at that altitude that is around uh, more than 3000 kilometers an hour uh, missiles typically that are used to shoot down travel at typically around the same speed around mark 3 or mark 3.5 uh, so sr71 you see missile being shot at you what do you do put maximum power go to maximum altitude and fly at your maximum speed and uh, you will simply outrun the missile the missile will never catch you and that has actually worked to this day no sr71 has been shot down you know zero zero whereas of course uh, u2 we know gary powers was shot down uh, during the cuban missile crisis some more u2s were shot down but the u2 is still a very good plane it is still in operation sr71s have kind of become you know why risk all this launch a satellite instead of going at 20 kilometers you fly at 70 or 80 or 100 kilometers low earth and uh, uh, orbit your orbital period is about uh, 90 minutes or so why mess with all this take pictures from the satellite instead of uh, over flying and get uh, risk getting shot down that is what has happened subsequently sr71 is expensive to operate it has been retired u2s are still being used uh, somewhere you know there is tension in the gulf or tension in uh, uh, i don't know vietnam or wherever korea wherever it is u2s are still being used today to fly at that kind of altitude which is considered to be Uh, open air space not subject to uh, uh, countries air space jurisdiction jurisdiction you are over flying my territory all that is supposed to be out of that limit so it is still being used the replacement for that was the originally what was called as the uh, corona series of uh, satellites low earth satellites all of these as they say in national geographic all of these are armed only with cameras they only take pictures no missiles no uh, you know the u2 or sr71 don't have any weapons they have only cameras there is nothing else you have the corona satellites were the initial attempt uh, to do this the pictures from that were not very good all right they gave some data uh, the corona satellite uh, the early 60s it used uh, 70 mm you know hollywood uh, to the rescue it used uh, 70 mm film and used typically what the kind of cameras that might be used for making uh, movies except they put lenses that were uh, that big so that they could capture slightly more information by the mid 60s they improved from that and went to the picture that i showed earlier is from a later series called the gambit series of satellites uh, the, the nomenclature given is kh7 the corona started with kh1 and so on uh, kh standing for keyhole uh, the the message being all these satellites what they offer is what is called as keyhole spying Uh, you this is like looking into a room through a key through a keyhole you can only see what is there if something is going on on the side you can't see it that's what the satellites do when they fly over they have a window of vision a swath that you can see and anything happening this side of that side of that you can't do much about it that's the nature of uh, what satellites will do. but this gambit kh7 used a film that was about uh, that big much better resolution and the camera lens was about uh, that big about 4 uh, feet uh, diameter about that big 
so it's going to capture hugely more information than what uh, all this anything earlier it was giving better pictures than even the uh, youtube could ever give because the uh, optics and camera were really much 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 uh, better uh, all that was anyway all the cia operations everything was all classified uh, president clinton decided that is all cold war everything is all over and he declassified all the uh, uh, pictures from all these early satellites not all of them most of them they are all under the possession of cia now they have all been put in the uh, uh, repository of the us geological survey they have a great uh, public website you go there you can get even streaming uh, satellite images landsat images live images as it is going over you can get uh, what it is giving so this is all nothing this is all old uh, film that they have uh, digitized the sample that i had uh, okay this is uh, the swath or the size of the picture that those satellites were uh, taking uh, this is the okay that's 20 kilometers uh, over i think i'll walk up here maybe uh, so uh, in the corona satellites that's 20 kilometers and uh, that is the swath of uh, one picture and uh, this is our campus that's the area that uh, we are interested in the gambit which was the later generation satellite now that's uh, five kilometers much better uh, resolution and uh, one picture would cover about uh, that much area but it has a film that is uh, that big and it has a lens that is that big so the picture that comes out of this uh, of course in those days it was only a uh, film it was only black and white film they experimented with color film also and they found that color film does not have good uh, resolution and they abandoned it but they use black and white film one picture of this size uh, that is available today in public domain is about 3500 megapixels is what is the image they give you don't have any uh, you know our cameras all 20 megapixel 30 megapixel but the 1965 spyfire satellite photograph one picture like this is having 3500 mega it's difficult to even handle that image you know you can't what they have done today is they have digitized the film and you can download it so i have downloaded a, a, ten, a thousand megapixel area here a thousand megapixel area there and there and so on uh, we can uh, share we can try a little bit of that i have uh, some pictures of uh, that also which i showed on the slide earlier also uh, okay that's an example of the kind of uh, detail that you can uh, see on that uh, picture uh, this is uh, this is Tinagar actually little bit uh, further uh, into the city that is uh, Panagal Park uh, that is uh, Venkat Narayana Road, Tyagaraya Road, GN Chetty Road uh, again I think you can see a lot more detail on the screen over here uh, I remember I went to a school on Venkat Narayana Road in 1968. Uh, you can see that this is a dark, there is a, you know, and that uh, Venkat Narayana Road, even then, like now, used to be lined with uh, avenue trees. I remember that. That is clearly visible in this 1965 picture. Uh, Tyagaraya Road and uh, GN Road, or also GN Chetty Road, are also full of uh, uh, trees at that time. Uh, you can see here. Uh, this is uh, Dorasami Road, railway line is here, there is no subway, 1965 there was uh, no subway. We can scroll to a different portion of the image, I will just, if you will just bear with me for a second. Uh, there's mistakes. Uh, or where, where, yeah, I suppose I will do that real quick. Because I want to show you about, uh, okay, there is the Adya River coming into view. And... Okay, I will uh, maybe momentarily we will look at uh, this picture before we move on to campus. Uh, you can see our campus is somewhere here. There is our uh, entry in road and out road and our campus is further over here. And you can see AC Tech, CLRI. Uh, you can see the Gindi Engineering uh, Dome building over here. And then this is the big uh, triangle, one-way triangle traffic that we have over here. Uh, over here used to be in 1965 picture you can see there used to be an all india radio uh, uh, transmission tower over there that is clearly visible in the uh, picture uh, then uh, mount road is coming over here and uh, turns around you can see you know the river is clear over here but it is not very clear over here that's because if you see there are these uh, now you can see the piers are being built on the uh, bridge uh, this this is the so called the bridge that we use today is the so-called new bridge, Marmalong Bridge, which was opened in 1966. 
in this 1965 photograph you can uh, i can zoom in and you can see very clearly that uh, you know uh, i think it's uh, fairly easy to zoom in i think i need to do this okay uh, did the bridge go out huh? you can see you can clearly see the uh, the piers of the bridge uh, that are over here the bridge is under construction i didn't know this bridge was built in 66 i was just looking over in fact you can spend a whole hour just looking at uh, the detail in this kind of picture so this is the kind of information that is uh, available then uh, you can see the campus very clearly i will scroll over to the campus you can see the, how the campus was uh, a lot of detail is available so that's the end of that Oh, that's all that is in this frame. I think I have a picture of the campus. This shows uh, nicely some area of the uh, campus. Uh, okay, I would like to show this because uh, I live right there. Uh, this is First Loop Road. I can see that this is B7. This is C2, C2, uh, C12, C13, and C14. C11 is there. You can see everything, you know, you can see this is the old uh, shopping center, uh, uh, there is the uh, intersection and then uh, uh, this part for example, this is not looking like this uh, today at all. It looks a lot more uh, uh, heavily uh, uh, under vegetation. You can see in all of this, you can see lot of, this is 1965, you can see lot of this uh, uh, residential area construction is uh, going on. I will go all the way to the hostels. You can see uh, what is the situation in the hostels uh, then. Uh, you can see Krishna and Kaveri hostels as they were then. Uh, now this is uh, much better than the 1982 uh, map that was put out by the institute. You can see the layout of the hostels, Taramani House, uh, Godavari, uh, Saraswati, Narmada, Tapti, uh, Jamuna and uh, Ganga. You can see Alaknanda is uh, under construction. It opened shortly thereafter. There are some signs of some clearing being done here which would uh, eventually become uh, Mandakini Hostel which opened a little bit uh, after that. Okay. So how did all this uh, progress over the years? I'll go back to my... Uh, where is there some current slide? Okay. This is what has happened to the institute uh, over the years in terms of the uh, number of students. I will wind up in about uh, less than 10 minutes. This is what has happened to our enrollment. The first few years, the annual report shows so many students took the exams, so many students were admitted, so one could calculate that. Then after that, the annual reports, it is uh, impossible to very easily determine uh, how many students are actually on the rolls because you have to maintain a running count and I gave up. You have to see how many are admitted, how many have graduated and therefore back calculate how many are remaining and carry this running tally. So I stopped it. Of course the first few years it will go like this, right? Because you start with zero students, you admit 120 students, 120 students, so you grow. Uh, so 300, 400 students in a couple of years you get. Then somewhere around the mid 90s, we started reporting in our annual report the actual number of students on rolls. So all this data is actual data, uh, actual number of students on our rolls. Uh, today we have crossed uh, 9000 students. This is how our uh, constructed area has been uh, growing in the same period. Uh, the first buildings to come up were the hostels followed by the academic area and the residential area started coming online only sometime after that, that clearly shows. And this is what we have, the total growth up to more or less right now. Uh, today our total area is a little over uh, 600,000 uh, square feet, uh, if you square meters, 600,000 square meters. Uh, if you work out uh, FSI for the whole campus, this works out to about 0.25 uh, FSI based on the entire campus area. Of course, you have to knock out the area that is uh, under roads and all that. But if you ignore that, this represents an FSI of the campus about 0.25. There are some things you can see in this, for example, in the residence, there is a sudden jump here and a sudden jump here. Uh, this is the addition of uh, uh, C2, Mullai Kurunji Mullai Mardam. This is the addition of uh, Chera Choda Pandya more recently. You can see that. You can see similar uh, uh, growth in all the others. For example, okay, here you have to be careful because whatever growth here will be reflected here. So this slope doesn't mean anything. It is just this slope continuing over here. But there is a steep increase in the uh, student hostel area uh, at this stage. 
this is the construction of the uh, Sindhu, Pamba, uh, the multi-story hostels and at the same time uh, we also stopped using the hostel messes and built the Himalaya mess. This is a huge area increase in the hostel area because of that. So this is the kind of uh, pattern we have in terms of area that is uh, built up. I plotted this in the other way. Instead of looking at the annual record, can we look at the area versus number of students and see if there are uh, some trends. Uh, you see that in some years the uh, trend is you know there is uh, more area than required. In some year times there is uh, less area than uh, what is required. Uh, you know in terms of you know so that tells us how much uh, headroom we had or how much squeeze we had in terms of available space. Uh, I want to spend the next few slides showing how we have maintained, continued to maintain the campus green while going through this huge expansion in square footage over the last 50 years. As an example, I used uh, Google Earth to do this tracking. Uh, this is a 2001 map where I have marked two areas which were taken up for construction around that time. This for the construction of uh, Pamba Sindhu hostels and this for the construction of uh, Himalaya. Uh, if you see uh, in 2002, the site for Himalaya has been cleared and there are some pathways there. Old timers remember these pathways used to exist. Uh, for example, from Jamuna or Ganga, you could come up here and take this pathway to cut across uh, the, uh, the shrubs and bushes that were there. The trees have covered the pathways, but when you remove the trees, the pathways are still visible, like you can see here. This area has been cleared for building uh, Himalaya. You see in 2005, uh, Himalaya construction is going on. This area has been cleared and we have started building the uh, multi-story hostels. But you come to 2017, again the whole place looks green except for the buildings. I think that's the way to do it. You know, you build the buildings, but you keep trees around them so that the area is uh, remains to be. The entire area still looks green, but this is not all that we built in those years. These are all these buildings that have come up during that same period. Uh, Mullai Margam, Chera Choda Pandya, New Academic Complex, Engineering Design Building, Sabarmati and Saravati, Tunga Badra, uh, the second uh, Krishna Mess, I think there is a name, no? What is that <laughs> one? Nilgiri Mess. All those were built in the same period. Over the next few slides, I will show a close-up detail on how this actually plays out, how you green the campus while constructing. So this is again 2001-2 time frame, Ganga Hostel is here. This is the place that is going to be cleared for building the uh, uh, Himalaya mess. In 2004, you can see it has been cleared. This has also been cleared, construction is underway. 2008, construction is mostly finished. Uh, pretty much you know but you can see there is some landscaping already starting 2009 it is very clear that landscaping trees have been planted all over the place over here as also around here around these buildings over here so you come to 2017 these trees have all grown up they are all you know this area where the cycles are parked now there are trees give 10 more years and you will have trees these trees will also become like the trees we saw in front of uh, Ganga and so on there will be big trees the campus, this area will again look as green as it used to look before this building was uh, built up. Same way here also, you can see there is a lot of uh, green around here. Uh, so this essentially tries to capture how we have managed to grow during the last 50 years. That's the satellite photo of the hostel area in the 50s and that is what it looks like uh, today. Uh, no comparison, right? That's brown, this is green. We have greened the campus. We have built lots of buildings, but we have also greened the campus. Lot of interesting, you can spend a whole half a day looking at all the details here and all the details here. Not only, it's no big deal greening the hostel area, right? This was open land, no big deal to green that, plant trees. That's not the only area we greened, right? This is my own uh, living area. That's where I live, B7, uh, 1 and 2. And then these are the C-type houses. Uh, this is from the extracted from the satellite view of 1965. This is the same thing uh, today. You can't make out anything. It's all under trees. You know, it's all, yeah, you can see more detail over there. But uh, that's what it is. You know, the, uh, in fact, uh, some of the old timers on campus tell me, I remember cycling down this road and noticing this open areas. Uh, kids used to play apparently cricket in this open area. Today it's impenetrable. You can't play there. Cricket is being played on the street only here, as we know very well. 
so that is what has been uh, done over there the greening is not only on the brown areas that we took over that were outside but the reserve forest also was not that densely forested it is there in the satellite view you can see the total tree count i think we have done the survey of that there are tools that will let you do this about 10000 trees in 1965 about 45000 plus trees today we have done that as we built up to 600000 square meters we have also come from 10000 trees to 45000 trees hmm? so it's there all over uh, this we saw the two pictures the greening is uh, very visible uh, i was curious about one thing i saw these palm trees Kumaran did this and he analyzed where the palm trees next to Mandakini were. So I said, okay, there are palm trees. There are some more palm trees uh, beyond this also here. You can see that in the uh, satellite picture. I said, okay, there is a Godavari hostel. What do I see if I go and stand there? And that's what I see. There is a palm tree there, right there. I believe this one of these or one of the palm trees uh, further behind there. Uh, this is the uh, driveway that leads to the uh, uh, alumni association office uh, there is a substation there this tree used to be good this was a good palm tree till two three years back it has been hit by lightning a couple of years back and now it is just a you know mortem or just a stump but uh, it is still there i think my my photograph of that i think uh, shows uh, i think a little bit better I think uh, that shows uh, the palm tree is uh, still there, uh, though it will be gone. In a few years, uh, it will be gone. And uh, I think that's my last slide. Thank you all for this. And I can, I can the talk is over. You can spend some more time, explore the satellite. Phot the satellite photographs are incredibly, you know, you can spend, uh, I mean, you talk about Wikipedia rabbit hole. I mean, uh, I think I can spend a whole day uh, at least looking at the satellite photographs, the, the kind of detail, it's amazing the kind of detail. You know, it's it's 3500 megapixels over the whole city, you know. There's every street, you can see the buses on Mount Road, everything is captured. Mount Road doesn't have much traffic by the way. There is, uh, there is one car or one bus every uh, half a kilometer or so, that's all the traffic that is in uh, 1965. All that information, uh, unfortunately, you know, the, the screen is not showing. You can see on this screen, you see the satellite uh, picture, the kind of detail that is there. It is just unbelievable. Uh, it's, 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 we have come, the city has come a long way. We have also come a long way. But I think we have struck a beautiful balance between how to build up the campus and also build a nice uh, green area on the campus. Yes, Varun. Perhaps we should give this talk to a more public audience to educate them. Because every time we build something, there are these guys who come and stand outside. Yeah. And Correct. And uh, you know, we are doing the greening more than what we have done the greening uh, for the last 50 years. We have been doing the greening for the last 50 so years. There is an opportunity. I collected some of this data in order to counter that only, and it is clear. I think there. I mean, I think it is very clear. We have done the greening. Who can? I mean, you cannot question that. We have done that. We have done this. We have made this place green. It was brown when we got it. We have made it green. And see, even now, you know, I think that is important. No. Yes. We have requirements, you know, Himalaya, see what we have done. We cleared an area that used to be green, we have put a building, but it's again going to be green. It can be done that way, unlike what is done outside, the, 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 the trees, the vegetation doesn't disappear forever and it will remain green. Because it's uh, in today's world, you know, it's also important to... The perceptions, yeah. public perceptions, yes. Good, yes. Excellent talk, thanks. Yes. Yes. A few palm trees that was mostly okay. Large extent of vegetation on campus in this area was actually is this uh, um, uh, prosopis, uh -huh. you know, that is uh, which is not uh, which is not a native species at all. Uh, it's unfortunate in the 50s and the 60s. Uh, if you see, this is actually people living on the edge of the forest, okay. So they are looking for uh, firewood, they go into the forest and pick firewood. The government of that day thought it was very clever and they came and there was aerial scattering of uh, prosopis seeds not only here um, over the entire state they seeded because it's a fast growing good firewood producing tree i remember in my student days i think we all many of us will remember the village people were allowed to come in 
they would come and uh, chop the uh, the trees the bushes all the twigs and then they would allow them to dry week or 10 days later they would come back and collect them all and i think the system was uh, whatever was your head load you were allowed to carry it out for free so i remember the taramani gate the guard used to stand there people would uh, go there with the firewood on their head and you would say okay show me you are not taking commercial quantity mean meaning and they would lift it and show that it's only one head load of uh, firewood and they would take it out uh, now we are paying the price for that no it, in a way it was good for that time instead of uh, cut, cutting off all the other trees they were getting simple firewood but now it is come back to haunt us you know that uh, the it is very strong uh, plant it doesn't go away easily uh, i think now we have figured out how to eliminate it i think if uh, you keep it under water for about uh, one month or one and a half months then it dies then it doesn't come back it dies for, uh, forever that's it you know so that's the story of uh, those plants and most of that mullai mardam area and also the tunga badra where we have cleared i think they were all mostly uh, mostly under not 100% i think david will have some uh, numbers maybe we don't want to publicize that uh, mostly mostly it is a prosopis but a handful of other trees also yes but we have been planting we have been planting in other places but i think with the tunga badra i think we are finished with uh, uh, clearing even academic complex is built by or even uh, chera chodya it's all built by demolishing existing buildings i think we are in that mode nac2 is coming up by demolishing existing buildings i think we are in that mode now uh, demolish existing buildings and build uh, taller buildings but still there will be a limit to how many people we can uh, keep on this campus so we need to start doing in tayo yes, yes, yes vijay come back in just yes vijay it is now no longer for us since 1961 yes then do we still have restriction on the percentage of the good question no i think this is this 25% of whatever fsi we are using uh, is a self imposed uh, from all i can tell it is self imposed if you cross it by too much we cannot sustain we will no longer be green we will no longer have this wildlife the nature of the campus will change okay if you see the satellite maps of adjoining areas okay adjoining developments are there uh, other institutions for example guru nanak college if you see okay the first thing they did when they got the land was they clear cut uh, their entire uh, space or even now dlf is developing a plot of land uh, between taramani link road and csir road first thing they did was flatten the whole place end to end okay and then it was in the papers the deer had nowhere to go and people started writing that their deer these deer escaped from uh, our campus i made some online comment you look at the map they could have escaped from campus but not any recent time because there is about uh, uh, half a kilometer they have to go out of our campus and walk down the csir road past ascendas and all that i don't know which deer is going to be able to do that uh, now so maybe they were part of a same herd uh, you know uh, 30 some few generations ago okay and then but they have been living there for for years you know but i think the deer have been uh, transported now i think yes please that comes swamps of green greenery on one side of the campus yes Yeah, just one second. I'll put the satellite picture, perhaps. So the first initially you showed huh. that the uh, area was on one side. Yeah, that's a great view of the satellite picture of. Uh, I think if I zoom a little bit better, I think it will show better on that screen. Okay. Just walk through. Is it the space are joining the international park that is largely untouched actually the, the, the screens uh, no i i don't know i think this screen is what uh, you have to really see <laughs> can't really see much on that screen water body what so is it the space are joining the international park that is largely untouched square green no it is our campus which is green and see even in this one also if you see for example on this side the vegetation cover is not high it was never high at no stage you know 100 years ago not in 1965 if you see here there are large you know the tree density is not in fact here you can make out very nicely on the monitor these these areas are, are largely brown they are not green even still the 
okay and the large this area is also this is actually all uh, not very green this is all mostly there are no trees here the trees there is a tree line here okay but then the rest of the actually this is that tree line demarcates the uh, forest anything on that side of it is the forest this is all acquired land that is very clear you know that part is you know further down actually this is this uh, so here yeah, you can make out in this one you can make out the you can make out the tree line no so this this is the tree line that marked the uh, forest so you can make out no only you know this is roughly where they you know this is along where the our that road is running no no that uh, back road that represents basically where the tree line was uh, earlier you can make out no Th this, this line of trees is there okay so that's what that Those is. Uh, it's all there, no. So this is uh, MSB, ESB, HSB. You can see beautifully. CHLT, PHLT, not there anymore. CLT, you can see that. Uh, you can see. Uh, uh, in fact, um, uh, again, you can see very nicely on the screen. BSB is there. You can see something is there. That is that Siddhir Bhavachi Karmaja logo that is in front of uh, BSB today. It is very much visible in this uh, satellite photograph also. Uh, in the satellite photograph, you can clearly make out the. Uh, the lamp you know the flame that way and the lamp this way very clearly visible on the in that photo uh, this is the old uh, ncc building and uh, the firing range uh, used to be there which we had to shut down once people started living here the firing range had to be shut down uh, you can see aplakulam also uh, very clearly on there aero building is not there 1965 aero building was not there it was built after that uh, the uh, ic engines and uh, the the uh, uh, TDC building is uh, there. Uh, there is big tree only here. This tree is still there. Aero building has been kind of built, uh, uh, you know, around uh, partly around that tree. This tree is inside the uh, courtyard of the aero building. Uh, large tree is uh, still very much there. Uh, this is the this is a building that is no longer there. This was uh, one of the first buildings that was built on campus. Uh, this is the central stores uh, go down. Uh, presumably, when the construction of campus was on all the cement and construction materials used to be brought here and distributed out of there uh, now NAC has uh, replaced uh, what is here uh, hospital is there KV is there it's very interesting to see this OAT is already there you know all that can be seen warden's quarters mostly with open space oxidation ponds uh, canal is there this canal goes all the way in uh, I am not sure whether in this one uh, there is more to the right yep that canal goes, you can see, uh, Shandugam, canal. Yeah, you, go, you can see, go all the, the canal goes all the way to the Buckingham Canal. Yeah. This is like, hey, okay, no, there is something on the canal. In the boat used yeah, the boat. it's there. Yeah, I didn't realize. Used to okay. Boat races. Yeah, they, on the, this is not very wide, no, about some 20, 30 feet. Uh, yeah, but uh, uh, the land of this canal is still exists. There is nothing constructed there. But the canal doesn't quite uh, exist, you know. So, uh, but this this uh, research park is kind of on this side. CSIR is on this side, and this canal exists. Except now, uh, at this end, Tidal Park has uh, covered the canal and put a parking lot over it, and uh, put uh, uh, pipes underneath uh, their parking lot. And uh, here also, uh, you can see kind of, you know, the uh, of course now Rajiv Gandhi Sale big road is there. Even in 1965, there was a small road at that time, and this canal has a culvert that used to go under that road. When Raji Gandhi Sale was built, there was a big culvert made there. Subsequently, now of course on the canal, now uh, uh, the metro uh, MRTS is there, and unfortunately, right here, uh, Indira Nagar station is uh, right here, and one of the pillars of Indira Nagar station comes right where the uh, canal, uh, the uh, this uh, this opens into Buckingham Canal. So they have actually on the other side of the road, uh, MRTS has blocked the uh, this old canal and they turned it parallel to the road for about uh, 50 feet because uh, the columns of the station come there and then it joins the Buckingham Canal after that. I don't know if that was uh, what you wanted to see, but uh, you know, you are talking about uh, line of trees or green area somewhere, I am still not sure. Uh, Around buildings, yeah. around buildings, yeah. 
Oh, that that uh, series of construction plot uh, thi things, huh? Is that what you're talking of? I think in 2014, uh, uh, the Indian Railway Board uh, Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think again, I think uh, you want to come up to the screen and take a look at it. I think this uh, projector sucks. <laughs> or, you know, I think he says there is some setting that needs to be changed also. No, I think projector sucks. Yeah, you can see that. No, no, that is a, the screen shows uh, something radically different. In fact, yeah. my starkest uh, reminder of our consciousness of greenery was when I went to the NASA office behind O.A.T. Ah, there, yeah, the yeah, there is a tree inside the building. Yeah, Yeah, there is a tree inside the building. We didn't want to cut down the tree. So we have put a hole in the roof and uh, kind of, you know, the, the tree is still there. It's inside the building. Kind of uh, adds a nice ambience to the building. Where is this place? Just want to see it. Behind the way, behind the, way the, NASA, yeah, NASA, okay. the employees association uh, office building. The yeah, there's a palm tree inside the building. Yeah. Uh, Shreena, yes, sir. Have, apart from all this data, yeah. Uh, do you have any documents which shows actually uh, individual you know, buildings built up over a period of time? Let's say, like for example, I was here on campus between 64 and 71. Yeah. Yeah, in this one, um, in the satellite photo, you can see admin building has come up, uh, you know, is not quite there. Yeah, for the photographs. I think that. Uh, no, every building, you know, I think uh, he is left. I, I have the date of when every building was kind of finished. I showed you the plot of how the. Uh, that is actual, that's not made up. The student count, there is a gap. But the buildings, there is no gap. Okay, student count, there is a gap from around 1965 to 1990. And I just joined by a straight line. Yeah, you have to sit and work out. Somebody has to sit and work out how many admitted, how many graduated, and carry the tally and bring it to. Na I didn't want to, you know, I, I think. It doesn't. Uh, but for the buildings, every building, how many square foot, which year completed, that information, what I showed, the building progression, that is no extrapolation, that is full correct data. It's there, it's there. When every building was finished and uh, what is the square footage, it's all there. That information is there. Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, did we lose any uh, land to the improvement? No, that, uh, see, the original, what was marked, okay, was walled off. Almost, in fact, in the 1965 satellite photo, you can see wherever the populated area is there, there is a compound wall. I didn't, I, I think, yes, Taramani, I remember a compound wall was there. It is only in the separation between Gindi Park and the campus that the wall was not there earlier. Okay, so the entire thing around Velacheri, Taramani, Kanagam, that entire place has been walled off from day one. So there is no question of losing any land. See, what people talk of is, uh, I hope I try to present that. There were two phases of land acquisition. The first phase for this campus, that is entirely inside the wall, that is nothing has happened to that. The second phase acquisition is a more complex story, you know, is to drain the 200 acre lake. And that is land that goes all the way up to Taramani Link Road. And that was acquired for future expansion of uh, IIT. In fact, the document says IIT, CIT and other places. So those, those areas still show in the land records as acquired for IIT. Because simply because IIT was the first in the list. But it has been used for various purposes. It is all in the custody of the state government. Okay. Still it is there, right? It's in the yeah, but some of that has been encroached. Well, I, I hurts, I do not know. Some of that land has been encroached. encroached. Lot of that land has but been encroached. The, uh, where we have research park. It is part of that acquired land only. Okay. It is in the custody of the state government. So it was not originally with uh, IIT. It has never been with IIT. It was never with IIT. It was acquired for future. See, that is the story, you know. This 200 acre lake, if you drain. There are people downstream who are cultivating off of the water here. You cannot deprive them of their livelihood. So if you want to drain this lake, you have to take over their land and give them fair compensation for their land. All that land up to Taramani Link Road was taken over because of that. 
okay but we don't want to talk too much about that we just see the land record it says acquired for iit so and and the, we, we therefore try to claim that this is uh, land is ours okay yes i will be you you know see there was a special tahsildar you know i showed the document on that there was a special tahsildar saidapet taluk set up chengalpet district saidapet taluk set up to acquire uh, all those lands and they have acquired and uh, all those land acquisition documents are sitting in directorate of technical education now showing all those lands have been acquired and the uh, fmb field measurement book shows that all these lands this patta number so and so everything all it's all there we have the records also now all gazette notification saying it is proposed to acquire these following survey numbers and uh, this much compensation is to be given name of the land owner to whom compensation is given record is there and then in the uh, land revenue records it's all recorded as acquired for iit where all this ramanujam it park all that is there it's all part of that you know it's all part csir also that entire csir stretch csir is not there in the 1960 map that entire area is just open space it came later okay so part of that land was given over to do the csir also yes so what is the reason we have made in delhi even delhi and bon no indo german cooperation ah that what about the, the in fact there is a nice photograph no about uh, indian officials and german officials uh, planting a uh, sign there saying delhi avenue this way bon avenue that it's like both einstein guest house no it's a, it's a sign it's a symbol of uh, indo german cooperation so delhi being our capital delhi being our india's India capital, capital they put like that yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is. It, it, it signifies Indo-German uh, cooperation. And, uh, and one more question. Yes. First, first leg, thirty kilometers from here. What another campus is? Tayo. Uh, uh, is it now? Here? Land is with us now. Okay. About two fifty acres is the compound uh, under the compound. We have put a compound wall already. Out of the two fifty acres, about one hundred and fifty acres of the land is given to IIT. There is a high tension uh, power line. that uh, crosses right across in between which land cannot be used for anything that's about 100 acres okay but it cannot be used by anybody for anything so there will be a swap in our 250 acre which uh, marks that of course we talked about whether they, we can make that power cable uh, underground and all that but it's uh, expensive very expensive but 250 acres of land is there i think the plan is now we'll start building there so we'll start building already a master plan is there how it will be laid out and all that it is in progress and i think yes so recently when we have cyclo escape yeah we have cyclo yeah so there is a new plan surrounding the campus wall we can plan to protect the way through all these centuries for the community i don't think that is really feasible okay. i don't so think i don't believe it is feasible trees will fall it's all right i think it's our trees have finite life no Will trees will fall i think no see we have 50000 we can do the numbers no we have 50000 trees take 200 years as the average life of a tree okay so every year 250 trees will fall is i mean is popular is like population right and if you have a cyclone uh, maybe 500 or 1000 will fall you know that is question no whether we can build a line of trees along the uh, wall of the campus to prevent trees from falling By the way, I think our uh, alumni office, Mahesh just walked out. Our alumni office collected funds for uh, replanting. Twenty-five lakhs were uh, from. Ah, that is replanting. No, he is thinking. Can you plant a, a line of trees which will block the wind and pr protect all the rest of the trees behind? It's not possible. Cyclones <laughs> can be super. Uh, can be super <laughs> yeah. There's a there's a guard house in that uh, alumni office near this uh, Tamil house. Something uh, is there. Still old uh, structure. <laughs> Yeah. Before, uh, in fact, I have to spend a few minutes and see if it is uh, seen on this map. Yeah. That will tell us whether it is predates sixty five. Exactly is following. No. See, that is that is approximately. I tell you what that. What that is approximately at the edge of the uh, forest area. No, no. I tell you what he is talking about. Yeah. He is talking about a little small structure, exactly. right? Which is where when you come out of the OAD, you go towards the yes, forest. Yes. Just before you go up, it will be on this side. Yes. yes. Slope, slope is no longer there sir by the way information in our days yeah was used to store sports equipment okay like for example hockey sticks footballs right. right. you know there was a little person who used to look at two people used to look after it so we used to use that as a sports uh, equipment store 
No, but I believe that that building was not built by us. That predates the campus. Is correct. There is one similar to that on uh, somewhere on the other side of the forest also near the Rajgaon end also. Similar building is there, which makes some of us believe that this is some kind of a structure that was at the edge of what used to be the reserve forest. Something like that. Something like that. Something like that. It looks like a security booth. Yes. Yeah. Sir. By way of information, uh, the, when uh, the site was given, was Thank signed you. by Kamaraj, Mr. Kamaraj, the minister, where was the land record office? I was told the land record office, we belong to the Tangalpe division, was in number 20, Fourth Main Road, Gandhinagar. And that house was owned by Devdas Gandhi. Okay, Thank possible, you, possible. This yes. is how much was good to be by one of our former employees. So all the, yeah, all the land records are all, all the land acquisition, everything was done with the uh, office sitting, all the documents are there in Directorate of Technical Education. Is it still there? Still there, still there. I got all these uh, papers that I saw, showed today. These are all from the files of uh, DTE. Because even, the, in fact, they have lot of uh, papers on the second round acquisition of the lands behind. But they also have records of the acquisition of uh, uh, this uh, 250, first round 250 acres also. And another thing is, you had some document of September 1961. I joined in yes, October 61. When uh, I was staying in the Kaveri Hostel, where the present uh, mega dynasty complex is there and the stadium is right, there, right. it was all cultivated land. Ah, you can see and it is empty. In 1960 map, it is empty. Yeah. It is empty, but in my student days in the 70s and 80s, it was not empty, it was overrun with uh, prosopis. Uh -huh. You had to, you know, and it was heavy. Of course, periodically they would come and clear the bushes, but uh, there was a path, I think, there was a path inside uh, oh, yeah, yeah. where you could uh, walk yeah, through. Yeah, yeah, you could walk because, you know, otherwise you have to walk <laughs> down the road, no? But from the, uh, yeah, shortcut from opposite Godavari, you can take the diagonal and uh, come all the way to OAT. One of the information is, in the initial stages, the first director wanted to have a boating club. Because it is there in the 1982 the map. Area. In 1982 map that I showed, which is the bogus map I showed, it shows boat and clubhouse and it does not show any houses on Lakeview Road. But I know very well, 1982, Professor Bose was there. I went to his house on Lakeview Road, he invited us for tea. The houses were there, but they are not there in the 82 map. It, the 82 map makes believe that uh, nothing, the lake we wrote doesn't they, exist. They did run boats one ah. day. I don't know to open the house or the, whatever it was. Boats were run from the gate. But that gate was different. Hmm. Because hmm. between the present in gate and out gate. It is the center. Only one gate was there. Okay. Thank you. Yes, yes. Yeah, we'll cover everybody. Yes. So 61, 62, that report says impenetrable forest. Yes. So Not really. Not really. Yeah. No. Okay. The, the map doesn't show that. The satellite view doesn't support no, even that. The, even the trees that were there, they were not that dense, I guess. It was not, yes. It was, it's, you can see from the satellite view, it is not that uh, densely popular, uh, wooded. Yeah. There are trees, but yeah. not that densely wooded. No, I think it is impenetrable in the sense, there is no, no pathways, no roads in that sense, you know. Panangad, half of it was Panangad actually. Panangad is uh, quite penetrable, no? It is not impenetrable, yeah, yeah. you know? You can still see, you know, a lot of uh, those palm trees are still there very much all over the campus. Hundreds, David is left. Otherwise, I think today we know there are 48,000 trees. Uh, we have a tree census. We know every tree that is there on campus. Anything that is more than 30 centimeters in circumference, we have a number, serial number for it and a species identification. We, we have a full census now. So now we can track from here on down in future. Uh, what tree, which tree died and uh, all that stuff. Kind and the of. breaches in the Kanagam wall was well, uh, done only now, is it? Which one? The breaches in the Kamboad wall. No, the wall, has fall, wall keeps falling down here and there. So, but it's being, it's being restored. I think whenever, I think last year also, I think one stretch, uh, uh, about 20 foot uh, stretch fell down, fell down in the rain. And we rebuilt. For about a month, it was uh, kind of open. <coughs> I think that will happen. Can't help it. I think it will happen. Yes, please. Also, you talk about Tayo campus. Tayo, yes. No, it is a second campus of ours. We will have some uh, research facilities there, it would appear. 
We have started a master plan. Of course, there is nothing there, there today. There is no power, no water, nothing. I think we have now started uh, drawing plans for uh, utilities, power, water and all that. And then uh, we have drawn a master plan also as to where the buildings will be, research buildings, hostels, all that. There is some plan. And as our requirement starts building up, I think we will start building up there. So will that be uh, We'll have two campuses, that's all. Yeah, that's a good question because as of now, nobody has a clear idea how you run a campus like this in two physical locations. What is a model? Do you put first years there or do you put under? No, nobody has a really good working model. As of now, our model is perhaps some research centers there appears to be the model. So, uh, uh, early year PG students would do their courses here and once they finish with their courses, they won't have to come here. They will live and work there kind of seems to be the model. We have to see what works. I think there is no answer for that, clear answer for that yet. Because I don't think we have a model we can look at. It and, has to evolve. <laughs> huh? Huh? It has to evolve. It has to evolve. I don't think we have a working model anywhere as to how to do this. Okay, so we will have to kind of do it. Some things will work, some things will not work. You know, faculty, see, even if it's a research center there, some faculty will have a very difficult life uh, working here and there. You know, so, we will have to see how it evolves. Yeah. Okay. Sir, uh, Sri water supply from outside. At Kare. Yeah. Uh, what happened to that uh, compost you used to have there? Yeah, that is further down uh, east, uh, by OMR. We used to get water from there. I think, no, that now they are coming, giving from here, no? From Pallipattu. Uh, Metro Water has built a big facility here, so I think uh, from where it comes, I think is no longer an issue. So from here, I think we have a big line. In fact, we have given space for them to store some water within our campus. Uh, used to go there, stay over and uh, there, yes. Because this was not there, no? So the water supply was from further down uh, the road, yeah. I remember we used to see circulars every now and then saying uh, due to uh, uh, power maintenance work in Akare, water will not be available uh, tomorrow, Sir, something like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I remember that, yeah. Yes, please. Why wasn't any of the media that was active in the second drive? Yeah. Why wasn't that used for construction of IAP? Because I think it is uh, tangled in the uh, how the acquisition was done. The acquisition was done by the state government. So the, the act was passed and this autonomous institution started forming all that was parallel. Okay, and the acquisition apparatus ended up on the state government side. And they never handed over? No. They never handed over. The land was acquired by them and that's it. It stays the with the state. Acquired for IIT, it's with them. But it is for, it should always put the for in quotes. Okay, because you see the, the history of it. Why it was acquired. You know, it was never meant, it was never, from the documents it's clear, it was never meant to be an extension of this campus right away. That is not how it was acquired at all. It is to make better use of these 600 acres. The 200 acre uh, flooding has to be uh, made, uh, taken care so of. So essentially what you are saying is we got what we got. We got what was designed for us at that time. But uh, the land records still show all that acquired for IAT, etc. So we will uh, take advantage of that if possible somewhere. You know, I think. This won't be IAT Madras. This won't be. It has been handed over. That uh, reserve forest was acquired and the uh, farmland that was acquired was all put together by the state government and handed over to IAT Madras. It is there somewhere. Some document is there saying that we are the owners. But I think we have never bothered to actually get the uh, uh, patta and ownership certificate for that. I think now we are trying to uh, do that. You know, so <laughs> yeah, I think to you know to show that formally, you no, know, because see, I think uh, more as a because see now regulatory things have become more uh, strict now, and uh, so when we want to apply for a building permit, they want you to show even if you are a government agency, they want you to show uh, you have legal ownership of that land. Uh, no, it, it works. See, the, I just told you about how the canal has been covered by Tidal Park and put a parking lot there. Tidal Park wanted to do make some changes in the construction and the regulatory approvals uh, for that are not coming. They have said this land shows it is acquired for IAT. Please show me you own this land, otherwise it will not give you approval. So they have not done anything. If you go there, you can see there is a part which is wall and pakka construction beyond that. Then there is a fence 
between the wall and the fence there is no pakka construction there is only sheds tiger park also knows and they cannot get uh, approval for that so as in some sense essentially tidal park is encroached put sheds on that land and they can put only sheds they will never get per, uh, uh, per any permit for any permanent building there because the regulatory apparatus has become tight because they ask them show me ownership and they can't because the book still shows iit acquired for iit so in one sense we also played a part in disappearing of water bodies in disappearance of water bodies the yeah, the 200 acres has shrunk pretty much that is true 200 acres is shrunk but you won't have this campus otherwise oh, no quarters way, by the way if this had not been done this lake would have completely disappeared any way <laughs> yeah now no that actually the lake was not in good shape i think in the last 20 years we have deepened the lake whatever part of the lake was there uh, in my series of photographs in this one that i showed in the 2001 photograph you can see there is not a drop of water in the lake it is taken in uh, july august time frame and the lake is completely dry nowadays it does not happen because subsequent to that we have deepened the lake so even in the uh, peak of summer the lake doesn't go dry anymore uh, there are many things you can see there is uh, in the 1965 satellite photograph in fact if you go down uh, from uh, towards lake view road towards the lake there is one big well there that well is visible in the 1965 satellite photograph also it predates us that well is visible clearly visible and that same well is still there even today where there be yes and those thing same numbers. numbers we don't know no because there was no separation between gindi national park and our campus when i was a student there was no fence there wildlife was free to move back and forth the deer the deer, deer was there in my student days even in the 60s deer have always been here even beyond actually even beyond back and all they used to roam kotulburam used to be full of deer even today there is a herd of deer living in kotulburam somewhere but now they are kind of stuck they can't come back here couple of months back we used to hear this fox sound this uh, jackals i don't know what happened to them i don't i think they are not coming out i don't know where they are no they idea. used to come on this uh, track uh, yeah. they used so to they come and howl in front of my house yes. no, they are there they are there, right? they are there. not as visible in madras avenue when you go you can see near g7 i think we will any more i think that's uh, all the questions we had we've been a wonderful audience thank you so uh, i i really think uh, okay it's fortunate that i attended this uh, so much of information collected from so many diverse sources uh, only sirap ka sunita nobody has the kind of story that was you know created uh, using uh, satellite pictures and